Thank you all for coming to this wonderful occasion in the life of Boston University, the opening of the Center for Computing and Data Sciences. Before I thank several people for their enormous contributions to getting us to this day, I'd like to reflect a little bit more historically on the journey that got us here. People in the computer science department will remember that there's been a number of renditions, concepts over the years of building a building in computation for this campus. I remember the first time walking into the department and saying we want to do this, and the huge skepticism uh, that comes from those failed attempts in the past. The concept of the center began with the first iteration of an academic program over a decade ago. It really started becoming reality when we held an architectural competition in the fall of 2012, yes, a decade ago, at which our architects KPMB presented a design from which you could, this building flows. They had the concept of the remarkable design. Three trustees were on that group, Steve Karp, Alan Leventhal, and Richard Cohen, and advised us on which architect to pick. And we sit here a decade later, reveling in their advice. As we waited to construct the center, our ambitions grew as we thought about and redesigned how we thought about computation and data sciences across the university. The Faculty for Computing and Data Sciences was born, as was our growing commitment to embedding computing, AI, machine learning, all across the university. We saw this programmatic initiative as critical to our role as a leading research university in the decades ahead. It's easy to understand why, I think. We all live in a world in which Computing is rapidly developing into an integral part of all of our daily lives and all of society. Computing has evolved from the earliest days, which I date back to, when it was used only by a few experts to design on very exotic machines the most technically complicated systems, aerospace vehicles, airplanes, computer chips, oil reservoirs, and using exotic and expensive machines. Today, computing is ubiquitous. Data storage is essentially free. And computing and data storage is embedded in everything we do. Along with computing has come our ability to generate, because of that, enormous sets of data and to bring computing and that data together to discover patterns and correlations that we would just, a decade ago, would only dream we could do. This impact of computing and data sciences on society is already large and will become enormous. We are in a data-driven revolution. Boston University is committed to leading in this revolution and to bringing computing and data sciences to all of our academic disciplines, not only to build applications, but to shape its ethical use in those applications. Our aspiration spreads across our campus, but it's centered here in this remarkable building, which is the statement, the physical embodiment of that commitment. The three departments that uh, um, Gene talked about, math and statistics, computer science, our new faculty for computing and data sciences, anchor this on the technical side, but it really diffuses across all parts of the institution. The fact that the center is located here, as in people know I joke, at the side of the Burger King. <laughs> See, there are people that remember. Uh, it's at the center of our campus. It was really the last greenfield space we had on ComAv of any scale. And it's appropriate that it's here. There's no better collection of faculty and students to occupy this location as we move into the middle of the 21st century. I expect that the education and research that happens here in the center will play a major role in defining Boston University going forward in the decades ahead and prepare our graduates, both in those fields and other graduates, to lead in a world driven by computing. Now, this building would not have been possible without incredible efforts of many people. Uh, one I want to emphasize at this point is the incredible support of our board of trustees. 
over the decade as we have uh, planned this building. I'll go back to two past chairs of the board who were involved, Bob Knox and Kenneth Feld, and then the support of Amas Fakahani, who you will hear from in a minute, our current chair. Our university provost and chief academic officer, Jean Morrison, led the definitive programming for this building and served as what I call the owner, the principal client for the building, overseeing, working with the architects on the design process and justifying the budget. Our architects at KPMB, led by founders of the firm, Marianne McKenna and Bruce Kawabara, and their team, many of whom are with us today, uh, took the program and our, our really crudely formed concepts and designed very quickly in the, the concepts of what we see here today, which is a great set of public open spaces for our students, faculty, and staff in a remarkable building in an urban setting. It's iconic in its architecture, but it also is, shows our commitment to the urban environment and to the sustainability of our planet. I want to thank them for their marvelous work. As you no doubt have heard, the center is the largest carbon neutral building in Boston today. No fossil fuels are being delivered into this building, only electricity. The vast majority of the heating and cooling of this building is supplied by 31 geothermal wells powering a very large heat pump system, each well going down 1,500 feet, most of them in the alley between here and Bay State Road. Uh, the wells at 1,500 feet are twice the depth of the height of the Prudential Building. So you get a sense of the magnitude of the system. This geothermal system and other sustainable elements make the center a centerpiece for our commitment to a carbon-free campus by 2040 or before, and in, which is the target of our climate action plan. We are moving quickly to become carbon free so that we can demonstrate to others in the city of Boston how to creatively address the looming climate crisis. I want to thank Gary Nixon, now Senior Vice President of Financial Affairs and Treasurer for championing the sustainability uh, of this center with our administration. Thank you, Gary. I I also want to thank John Fish, CEO of Suffolk Construction, and his marvelous team for partnering with us so effectively uh, on building this project. Now, I have watched a lot of construction projects in my time. People know I do watch. And this one has to rank among the most complicated I have ever been involved with. And the fact that it came together and we're standing here this afternoon is a marvel to project management. I also want to now take uh, with my pleasure to introduce the mayor of Boston, Michelle Wu, who is with us today. We're really decided, delighted to have you with us. Uh, you have seen the building rising on the skyline in your time as mayor and before, and you've been inside the building doing construction uh, at an event we hosted. I suspect you have wondered to yourself one of two things. Either what were they thinking when they designed this, or hey, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I don't know which. <laughs> we are mindful, though, of your strong commitments to fighting global warming, of creating a carbon-free Boston, and to creating a thriving, sustainable economy in our city. We are aligned, as you can tell. The programmatic motivation of this building is clear. It reflects the importance of computing and data science in our rapidly changing society and economy. But it also, through its sustainability features, represents the future that we have to have to have a carbon neutral Boston University by 2040 in a better environment for all the people living in Boston. We wanted something distinctive, something that you would denote the center of our campus. I think we've gotten that. We've achieved what I like to call a remarkable building defined as a building about which everyone will make a remark, especially the people who live in Cambridge. 